Justin O'Malley, thank you for coming on the show, uh, catching up with Justin O'Malley. How's it going? Good, and yourself? I'm good, thank you. So uh, it's it's been a few years, uh, although it hasn't really. But um, when I say a few years, you are a former Dallas student, and Dallas grad, Dallas accounting grad. How many years ago has it been since you graduated? So it'd be it'll be four years in May because I was part of the Dal the the 2020 group. The 2020 group, okay. So that time was a bit of a blur for me, as it may or may not have uh, been for you. So what do you recall from uh, kind of the March 12th, uh, the, you know, the shutdowns and lockdowns uh, to graduation? Kind of what do you remember about that time period? So we had Comprom on, I think, the 13th. And I went to get my hair cut on the 12th or the 11th. And I think it was at that point, they basically decided no more comprom. And I was like, oh, I basically just got this haircut for nothing. But like I was overdue for a haircut, so it's fine. But I went specifically to get a haircut for comprom. And so when they told us it was going to be canceled, I was like, well, that sucks. But so what are we going to do? So our group, my friend group still decided, you know what, we're still going to have our own comprom. So the next day when it was supposed to happen, we all dressed up, went to our friend's house and, um, so that was May, so that or sorry, that was March, and we still had our own version of Comprom, just the, the ten of us. And then from there was finishing up like the final assignments because they told us they told us like some assignments are just gonna be waived, there's no exam, just finish up the last few things, and that was really it. And then how did it feel yeah. to have like a plan? Like you were you know, fourth year, second semester, um, especially in fourth year when we have all of our kind of accounting boot camp, and then you have your comp prom, you kind of see like, okay, this is February, March, April, this is final exams, and then we graduate in May, June. How did it feel to be in the middle of it and kind of have it say like, hey, um, you'll still graduate, but like all the steps between now and then are going to look different. Like, how was that for you um, kind of experiencing it? So... I mean, it was definitely an adjustment because I was expecting, like I had had in my mental calendar, like, okay, this is what's coming up. This is what's due. And then everything was like kind of accelerated or just like taken away. And uh, yeah. not that like, I don't think it hindered me in any way or like, because like my grades were still reflected and I still did well in each class when I looked at the final grades, but it might've, I might've been able to get just that little bit higher um because like i had been stuck like i was in the process of studying harder for some of those courses that just so i don't know that it hindered me by much by any way but it was definitely like okay that changes some things and i have to readjust my thinking but for the stuff that i able was able to submit then just made sure to put that extra bit of effort just to make sure that i could get the best possible mark with what i had so far so you pivoted um yeah yeah. And kind of went, looked forward and whatnot. What do you attribute um, your ability to kind of pivot and look forward versus, you know, uh, some professors, some other students who maybe didn't um, pivot as quickly or as, um, you know, as positively or, you know, just got there, but needed a bit more guidance. So I think part of that for me was like the prior work experience I had, like growing up. So like I worked in a restaurant and working in like working in that industry, you have to move quickly. It's mm. not, it's not do or die. Cause we're not saving lives. We're just cooking people's foods, but you had to move quickly onto the next order. So it, like you had to pivot your thinking in my role at the restaurant. I was dishwashing prep cook and line cook all in the same night. So whatever needed doing, I had to move quickly and, shift to what was I doing next to make sure that I can mitigate all three roles and not fall behind. Um, even working in the, like the, in the accounting firm, the couple co-ops I had done, I would be working on like four different clients a day because I would get partial information for one, move to another one, finish up a file that I'd worked on a week ago because the client decided to get back to me at that point, finish that file up. And then I might have a, a nil T2 uh, return. So not much 
to it, but I had to fi file that by the end of the day or get that in for review by the end of the day so the manager and partner could get it out. So. How do you, how do you prioritize your time or prioritize those to-dos? Because I know that that's something that before I started working in a firm, I didn't quite, like I knew that it was client driven, but I didn't know what that meant. And I really like your parallel uh, between client services and a restaurant because I also worked at a restaurant I agree. You have to be able to wear many different hats and kind of switch. So just curious, um, what advice might you have to somebody who's never worked in a public accounting firm who wants to and maybe is starting to, but doesn't quite um, either understand or doesn't have any tools in order to kind of switch back and forth between all those priorities? So I think what helped for me was uh, it was like specifically for the firm that I worked with and who I had for mentors kind of explained like things are going to get busy uh, quickly, but I started on a co-op on an off like January co-op. So I had the summer to, or the September to December co-op. So I could kind of see how things move, but at a slower pace. So when I jumped in into the next term, I was then kind of prepared already. So that helps. So it was like having the right mentor. Um, mm. For me, I get like, I'm just able like, I think it's because I'm, I focus on a lot of things at once and I'm, if I'm thinking of one thing, I'm also thinking about 10 other things. So it's kind of a mindset. I think that was part of it. So it's just being, I think you have to have a, a certain mindset to be able to like split your focus six different ways or know that. Um, but as I've grown in my role, I've realized using Outlook as a as a tool like to manage, okay, well, I've reached out to this client at that time. Okay. Well, they haven't answered me in a week time to follow up. Um, I'm also yeah, like so, have my Excel yeah, developing sheet systems. as well. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Developing yeah. systems. Sorry. You said Outlook. And then what was the other one before I really, uh, Excel, I've got my Excel, uh, like tracking sheet for like all yeah. like my master client lists to know, okay, well right now we're in their T4, T5 season. So when did I first contact them? Do they need to follow up? Or if there are fiscal dividends, well, I can just go in and grab the, the information, fire it up to the to the next person, and then get it done and filed, and it's one less one on my list to deal with. Absolutely, I love Excel for that reason. I almost feel like you don't somebody does an accountant if they don't like plan either part of their lives or vacation or track time or something with Excel and. I'm guilty of this. So I was having, I had a bunch of different research projects and uh, it was a mentor of mine who said, well, like, where's your list? And I'm like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, I, I have like, I have systems. I have like, you know, Trello, I have this, I have that. He's like, just get a piece of paper or an Excel sheet. Boom, Excel, saved my life. It's I, like, I don't know about yours, Justin. Mine's not pretty, but it it gets the job done. Yeah, mine mine's not organized. Like no coherent person would understand yeah. what I'm doing. But it works for me and I'm because I'm still new to like my client list just because I'm only a supervisor moving into my second year of it. My client list has grown, but it's not uh, last year. I didn't really have to deal with T4T5s. It was more like individual. It was all those off calendar clients. Well, got a smaller list of those. So it's easy to keep track of like just in Outlook or uh, yeah. in our we use uh, iFirm for our tracking. So like I don't need an Excel now I'm at the point where I actually need to build a like, more comprehensive Excel. And uh, I've seen a couple from other partners and principals that have like grown and I'm like, no, that's a good looking Excel. So I'm starting to borrow, borrow there. It'll uh, evolve. Yeah. Yeah. One system doesn't have to be the system. All right. So we got to know each other during third year because we had cost management and then fourth year, first semester in IFA2 and then second semester AA2. Is that more or less accurate? Yeah. Yeah. We only had the three, the three classes together. Yeah. So we, um, you reached out, like we had coffee kind of, I think between third and fourth year, got to know each other like a little bit. And then you came back and did boot camp. and um, something I am going to say is like, it's always nice when, a student is invested in their studies and debriefs the exams and, you know, we're always available. And as profs, like it's the number one thing um, that we, we love is like when students come and want to engage with us. Um, I feel like I can't say this enough on here um, because sometimes my first years, when I teach first years now, they're like, oh, like 
you actually want to talk to us or you know, like she actually wants to see us. So I don't know. What was your general vibe about um, being in the Dal quote boot camp, the accounting major? So, I mean, for me, like I didn't, like I struggled more with your courses and you and I have talked about this. Um, so like I struggled more with your courses. So that like, I was like, okay, well, there's a disconnect here and I need to figure out what that is. So coming to you for during office hours was okay. Well, it, it's, there's something wrong with my end. So I need to figure out what that is. And then we were able to kind of talk it out and find another way to explain it. That made sense to me. Um, where if you look at tax, well, there, there's only one way to do tax. Like there's a bunch of different nuances, but like yeah. there's one way it's, that's the calculation. That's what it is where, yeah. where it's cost management, there's all the, the, the buckets, right. And Yes. Oh my There's gosh. So many yeah. Different ways to separate it. I, um, I co-taught, I guess lectured, co-taught. I don't know. I sat in on a friend's class. Um, she's, she teaches audit at the university of Alberta. And, um, I really love what she said. And it was like one of her closings of the thing. She's like, okay, audit. And, you know, kind of, it was first class. So she's explaining the back and forth. Um, and she's like looking at Netflix and it was something like, I can't quote her cause it was too brilliant, but it was like, if looking at the Netflix financial statements, knowing that they might be off by $400 million, if that bothers you to no end, but rather you'd love to sit and you'd love to reconcile until every dollar is accounted for, she's like, taxes for you. And I just felt like that was like the ultimate like mic drop because it's true. You can't be off by $400 million in tax, right? Like, very, like maybe you can, and I just haven't like figured that out, but tax is tax and tax is right or wrong. Whereas like audit... Uh, you know, misleading and even, you know, financial reporting. It's like, well, if you're dealing with billions of dollars, you know, what is, what is material? So yeah. no, listen, um, it's, it's not, it's not easy. And um, you are not the only one who didn't get every topic, like right away. I would say that's the majority. The difference is, and kind of why it's been really nice to stay in touch with you is like, that is the attitude of like what it, what it takes and, you know, come back to it. It's, you know, it's the sports, it's the, it's the learner. It's like, you know, just, just getting in there and, and learning and adjusting. Um, and so kind of when, when we circle back and kind of touch base one of the first times, so now setting the stage, you graduated at the start of COVID, you started articling, uh, you started the CPA PEP modules. And then all of a sudden I found out you were in Canmore. How did that happen? Yeah. How did you go from so, Ontario to Canmore? So that's, yeah, so it's between the two years. So, um, or I guess, yeah, about two and a half years. So that I moved to Canmore in Jan, I arrived Jan, January 4th, 2023. Okay. So, um, so Jan 4th, 2023, I showed up with uh, probably a car full of, of clothes and two snowboards and I had asked the firm if I could move there fully remote just for three months so I could enjoy the snowboarding season. And uh, found out that a colleague of mine had also asked the same thing, but we didn't know that. Um, so we both lived in Canmore. So he was there for two years, but I just did it for the ski season. And uh, yeah, it just worked fully remote, fully remotely. I skied, uh, snowboarded every weekend, and then I had friends come and visit me. So take a little bit of vacation here and there. And then I drove back at the end of March and packed up all my things and then drove back. Uh, took me, that uh, was about two, two and a half days each way coming from Ottawa. So what, what was the response when you asked um, to work fully remote during a busy season in like several provinces away? Like what was the, what was the vibe? I. Uh, so I asked uh, our director of eight, like director of operations, who is essentially our HR, our HR person, and they were more concerned about WSIB than it was during busy season. Oh, like um, like workers' compensation. Yeah, like so working if I got, in a different. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Like because I'm working in a different province, um, working fully remote for that short for that time. They're more concerned about how it would affect them from a WSIB standpoint if I got hurt out of my home office per se. 
because each rule is different in each province. Sure. Turns out it wasn't really an issue because I'm short term and it's only a home spot. It does so it didn't really affect. But that was their bigger concern, not that it was tax season. The reason I asked that is because there's this myth and like, I don't know where this came from, but I started hearing it a lot and I didn't just hear it with my, with the students, but I've also heard this with sometimes, uh, some of, some of my colleagues and we, we live different lives. You know, a lot of, um, our, our counting profs and a lot of like colleagues at Dal have kids, some don't. Um, but here's what I used to heard from students as, as well as colleagues is you better travel between the summer of like, what is it? Undergrad and your first and starting in February or sorry, starting in um, September, like your first year, because yeah. if you don't travel, then you will never travel. And I'm just like, what? Like that is, that is a long life. Like that is a, that is a you know, 40 year career, like 40 year career plus, plus, plus like to never, never travel. And so I started pushing back a little bit because people would come to me and like, oh, I really want to do like a graduate diploma during the summer. But then that means I only have three weeks to travel. And I was like, well, I mean, like you can travel like after you get your CA or CPA, you can travel possibly like, you know, uh, during the next summer, like, you know, figure it out. Like I, first of, first of all, thank you for helping me, um, debunk that myth that, um, if you don't take these like very sliver amount of time that like, you will never be able to like leave your province. You left during COVID in busy season to be on the mountains in another province. So like, first of all, like, thank you. And um, thank you for also sharing the hardest part about that discussion um, and how it was received uh, was, you know, essentially some paperwork items, like important paperwork for business, but it wasn't, oh, I can't believe you're not committed to the firm or, oh, I can't believe, like, you know, all these things that come in our mind, like, what would I think? Oh, you don't take our work seriously. Oh, you want to abandon us. I'm sure some people who, in your shoes um, would have been afraid that they would have got fired for asking. Um, did you have any of these kind of fears or concerns before going in and talking to the director of operations? Not really, because the worst thing that they would say is no. Yeah. And then my next point was like, okay, well then I'm taking a three week trip to Alberta. Um, yeah. So, and then I would still, I still would have done my skiing, um, but being able to work remotely allowed me to then go ski 40 times in three months. So, and it allowed me to go even to BC and then do a weekend out in Revelstoke and a day trip out and kicking horse. So like, I then got to venture out a little, it allowed me to venture out just that little bit more. And then, um, because I did it alone, I then had friends come out and visit me and it was also on their bucket list as well. So then yeah. I would host them for that long uh, four or five days that they were there. So I wasn't like really concerned that they'd say no, it was okay. Well, if I can't do it, then fine. I, like I'll take it as a vacation mm -hmm. or yeah, if I was that, um, sorry. It was like, even if I was that so inclined, well then maybe it's a time to look for a, uh, for a different job possibly. There's uh, lots of, lots something. of different, yeah, options out there, but like understanding that this is something that was on your bucket list and that that's a priority. And do you think like, what was the relationship and I, the way I'm going to bring this up is like career capital. So Cal Newport uh, has a book. It's called So Good They Can't Ignore You. And his whole thing is not finding your dream job, not like that we're destined for this one job, but rather that we build skills and that we build relationships and we work really, really hard to get rare, invaluable, you know, skills. And then um, we, I don't want to say use it, but that we kind of like, we're like, hey, cool. Like, I, I want to do this work. I feel like I've develop this relationship with you and that there's trust. And I want to now do that work for three months in Alberta. So how, like, is this something that you would have approached um, before you had that relationship with your employer? Uh, is there a reason that you waited like two or three years before doing it? Or is it the timing wasn't, wasn't right beforehand? So I had like, it wasn't really like between the time of like when I started that job in September, 2020 to moving there in Jan 23, it wasn't like what I considered. I was like, because I hadn't really like, and then we, that was during COVID. I was just like, I'll just go and take a vacation there. And then it was August of, or August or July. I have like 2022. That's when I asked. And I was actually going on vacation for another, for a three week trip. Um, and was I got the that. Festival? Pardon me. Was that the festival? 
uh that was no that three-week trip that's where i went uh to uh to europe and i saw an f1 race and i spent 10 days in ireland nice nice all right um, sorry not the best okay continue along there's there's yeah. i can't keep track of them all justin <laughs> yeah i'm i've done a fair bit of traveling over the last couple of years so um yeah so then that was so yeah i had asked right before i left on that trip and i got approval the day before i left um so i was like awesome so then i booked my my stay in canmore and then and i was off in europe for three weeks and I came back and it's like it was approved by the it was approved so I was all good and um I didn't there I didn't really think about it before I was just like oh it's just gonna be vacation and then I thought you know what I'd like to I'd like to live somewhere different just like, just a change of pace just a change of scenery like I loved being on the east coast for those five years and I just felt that I needed a change again from Ottawa like things were just kind of stagnated um just was kind of done with the city and i thought you know what like what's the harm in asking absolutely so. hey if you put your hat if you put your employer hat on mm -hmm. um and this is a bit of a leading question but do you in an alternate universe where there was a justin that didn't go and a justin that did go or a justin that went for a vacation versus a justin that went remotely like do you think it was also in your firm's best interest to perhaps like do you think they got a better Justin while you were there or even afterwards? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a loaded question. Cause I think okay. um, <laughs> in the sense that like, I definitely didn't, while I was there, I definitely didn't prioritize my work as much as I probably should have. Um, and it's been discussed with, uh, with like other partners and principals. Cause they're like your quality work is something and I kind of explained this is the situation for me and like my priority was to snowboard um that being said it's not like I left them I did bad work I just probably could have been more productive during the work day um in that sense so in that short term no they didn't get the best productive most productive Justin because his mind was still focused on being out in the mountains and and just the kind of still like awestruck that he was out there just Fair. hanging out and living his best life. But when I got back, um, I felt more refreshed and it was like, and like when I left, I, like, I knew, I knew it was time to go home. Like at the end of the three months I knew it was like, I've now seen what I wanted to see. Um, cause I actually got to see the Northern lights on my last night before I left. Oh, that's cool. And so to me, that was a sign that, uh, that was like, I've seen what I've wanted to see. I've snowboarded five different mountains. It, it's time to come home. And I felt more refreshed. Um, and like, they got better productivity out of me by like more into the year. And I was still transitioning into a new role. So I was still struggling with transitioning into a new role on top of like, now I'm coming back into the busiest of April's busy season. And then then starting capstone one a month later. So um, they got uh, a better Q4, Justin. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. I feel like even talking to you, like the, the dividends, you know, from that investment um, for, for both you and your firm, like it's, you know, whenever I hear you talk about your firm, um, it's always like very positive. Whenever I've reached out with a student has questions, like you're always very, positive about the firm and like in positive with bringing uh different students discussing options and so i mean that's not something that i always see um from from former students um and like i know it's not all sunshine and rainbows all the time for anybody yeah. anywhere but i think like my observation is that it's a good move for employers generally and you're right like possibly not like if you're measuring like a very you know, on that Saturday. Um, but like long term holistically, if firms invest so much in their employees that um, you know, ideally you want to keep these these assets around and productive as, as long as possible. And it's really looking at the long, the long focus. And, you know, so anyways, apologies to put you on the spot, but like I guess yeah. it, it's it's real, right? Like your answer is real and it's it's the long term game. And hopefully more and more organizations are taking that long term investment approach. 
Yeah. And I, I know, I think I was myself and the other colleague who's out there for his second year. I think we are, and I think I was the catalyst because I also did a month in Halifax the year before and they let me work fully remote, but that's when the world was a lot more remote than it is now. Now it's, yes. okay, we strongly recommend two days a week or it's mandated two days a week in the office. So um, I think I kind of was a catalyst of like, for a firm, like, okay, well, if people want to work in different places. What are we willing to allow? And were we not willing to allow? And I think they, I definitely started the conversation and now there's more people who have talked about it and I'm not the only one since who have done it or have talked about it. And I think there's a few other people that are going to start doing what I'm, what I've done in their summers more likely than in their winters, but I can see it yeah. happening a little bit more. I love it. And again, just breaking that narrative, um, you know, I, I have these four months for the rest of my life to vacation <laughs> or to, you know, be on a ski hill or, you know, cause like, what if somebody really wanted to go on a ski hill and it's like August anyways, uh, I digress. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Hey, this is a question I never asked you, or maybe I did and I'm going to pretend like I forgot, but why accounting and when accounting like. So that goes back pretty far for me. Um, originally it was to be an actuary and that was all the way going up until probably grade 11 grade 12 and I took accounting one and two in grade 11 grade 12 and by grade 12 I kind of decided that was going to be the avenue for me and it was because I was good at it I could see the patterns I could find where the disconnect was I could find why why wasn't my balance sheet balancing why mm. why are these transactions not jiving the way they should be like why why aren't things reconciling? And I was able to figure out because it's all just a big puzzle. And if you can see the pattern, then it turns into like it turns into a picture. So at that point, I kind of knew like from grade 12, I knew and then I got accepted into Dow. And I took accounting one with Jim Power. Um, and it was the same thing as what I did in high school as a okay, kid, no big deal. And then it was management accounting and cost accounting that's where i had my most difficulties and it's because it's not the same linear as financial reporting um but i powered through and got through it with the help of well with jim power and management accounting a little bit and then uh with you with the rest of the stuff that i did and then same with uh Laura was tax so um jenny and yeah jenny a little yeah. bit in the, in intermediate accounting one so oh, Tammy and some audit and yeah, the whole, whole crew. Um, okay. So I know we jumped around a little bit. Um, now it brings us to um, CPA PEP. Would you say, I know we, this is again, we talked about this a little bit. Um, first of all, I'm going to go really nonlinear and just say thank you for coming on here. Uh, we talked a bit, but before we started, uh, this is my first uh, podcast recording since, um, gosh, like late February or early March. Uh, a lot has kind of gone on in my 2023, and we were fortunate to catch up over coffee in November. And I just want to say, uh, like, as an educator, I try really hard to have boundaries and have, you know, like I'm, I'm the you know, professional and like, you're the student and uh, at Dal, like we have less and less of that. And definitely when students graduate, you know, and especially going to the CPA program, like the whole thing is like, we're, we're colleagues, we're at different stages, we're at different things, but like, you know, we're, we're colleagues and, uh, meeting for coffee in November, uh, when I was doing very little public outings and really little, um, just trying to kind of still grieve from the loss of my mom and still uh, get over my back injury. I just want to say like, thank you, um, for not only being a great alum, but being like a, a really good uh, colleague and staying in touch. So I just want to say like, thank you. And, uh, thank you for coming on and kind of easing me back into, uh, the microphone. Yeah, not a problem. Like it's, uh, it's, it's been, it's like always been a pleasure talking with you just because you've helped me grow in my professional career to where I am now. And then like, I, I've learned a lot from you just from the, the few, like not the actual, maybe not the actual like classroom concepts, but the, the, te the 
the the messages behind it just um remember when we went for coffee there's a couple that that, that always stick with me it's like understanding and the ones that's understanding the why and mm. like because if you don't understand the why then what are you doing like what's the point if you don't understand what if you don't understand why you're doing what you're doing like you're just mindlessly doing the activity and that's not how you're going to grow not in tests, <laughs> not in class, yeah. not in tests, not in life. It's, uh, yeah, when we can ask the why, it's not easy. Uh, it, none of this is easy. Uh, Dow's not easy. Life's not easy. Um, CPA PEP's not easy. Um, doing all this during COVID, coming out of COVID, we think. Um, you know, I'm always a little hesitant. <laughs> Somebody's going to be like, no, you said the end. You jinxed us. It's like, I think we're right. <laughs> like, um, yeah. But none of this shit is easy. Um, but I truly do believe, I believe that it's worth it. And I believe that like when we reflect, why am I doing this? Is this in line with my values? Um, and it's not going to be necessarily the easy path, but you wouldn't be doing this if it were easy i wouldn't be doing this if it were easy uh would you agree yeah no i'm i'm up for the challenge like i can't if it was easy like that's not the point like our whole point is to grow and be better than the versions of yesterday or last year so to me it's just to keep growing and keep learning grow and keep learning all right so there is a topic uh that we touched on and it wasn't off base and I'm struggling because uh, I'm out of practice on how to transition to this. But essentially, I know that for myself, my CPA journey went like this. And if you caught me on a Friday, it might be like this. And if you caught me like two, two weeks later, it might be like this. Or it might just be, it was all over the place. Um, so we're recording this mid-January. So you're, you're heading into busy season um, and about to have tax at the end of it. But there was a, a bump in um, about a month and a half ago or two. So mm -hmm. results came out and um, you were you were unsuccessful um, for the overall CP results. First of all, like, thank you for talking about this and thank you for sharing because my opinion not only stayed the same about you, but in fact, it grew. A lot of us can walk through life and show all the good things, um, but it takes a really special person to say, you know what? Um, I didn't pass this year. I will next year. Uh, I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow and I'm going to do it. So first of all, like kudos to you um, because that is, that, that's who I want as my CPA colleague. Um, that's, that's the person. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we like? A lot of the students that I talk to are nervous about going to the CPA profession because they might not make it through in one shot or they might have some bumps. So it's really unfair of me to ask you this, but I'm going to. You're near the end, but you're in the middle of the shit storm right now. The, all the feelings cannot be positive. What are you doing um, to kind of work through these feelings and to put yourself in a good position to write and pass next year? So, I mean, when I first got the results, it sucked, like it sucked and it will like, it, it didn't feel great because like you want to pass it with the, the other colleagues and I'm not. Sorry, sorry, um, something happened with our audio. Oh, I can't hear you. I don't know if that's on me or, uh-oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. I think it's loading my screen in just a hey, second. No worries. So we cut, uh, it cut off when you said I wanted to pass with all my colleagues. Yeah, so exactly it. So like I wanted to pass with all my colleagues, but like obviously that didn't happen. And so it sucks. And I took that weekend to kind of just like process everything. And I was still like, I went out with my girlfriend and we still went out for dinner on Friday because it wasn't a full fail. It, like I passed part of it yep. and I wanted to sell it. Like I still felt that, you know what? I still wrote it. I still got, there's 
other people that just get up in there, get up in their exam, like, and leave. Like, uh, one of my colleagues, when she wrote, she watched someone get up on day one, like at nine, because like, the exam starts at nine or so. And she watched someone get up at 930 on day one, say, I can't do this and walk out. Yep. And that wasn't me. I sat down for four hours and five hours on day two and, and finished. And that's still, that's still an accomplishment. Is it the desired result? Absolutely. No, but I, I, I got it. Um, I finished, I finished it. Doesn't mean like, didn't mean I have to pass, which is why all the firms take you out the night before celebrate the fact that you still wrote it. And like you said, it, it doesn't, it doesn't change my, like, it didn't change your opinion of me, whether or not I passed or, or failed because I still went and wrote it. And that's what I had other partners um, and principals to kind of tell me the same thing. It's like, it doesn't change my opinion of you. Um, don't worry about that. You'll, you'll get it next time or something. And so, like you said, now it's been a month and a half later. What am I doing? I'm still trying to figure that out because it is tax season. So, I've got a plan that I'm going to start reviewing my notes and start going through everything again over the next, probably start maybe at the beginning of end of, end of February, beginning of March, right after a T4, T5 season. And I'll start reviewing and reading textbook chapters and whatnot. And then I'll, I'll just study a little bit harder, uh, maybe change up different strategy because I know that what I did, what might have not been the best strategy, but it's what I needed to do at the time. So change up my strategy a little bit for the summer when I take the summer off again, or a partial summer off when I go to retake, uh, retake that portion. Right. And interestingly enough, uh, you, you have a couple of meetings, uh, coming up or one meeting coming up. Um, so it's not just you making a plan. It is you making a plan, taking ownership. But it's my understanding that you're also meeting with other people that are, you know, partners in firms uh, that perhaps weren't successful and helping getting their input and helping make a plan. So. Yeah, so exactly that. So um, our firm, what, what we started doing is when uh, you started moving into a more of a management role, uh, you would get partnered you'd be like have a mentor with one of the partners or principals. So you would write down like who you'd like to have as, as a mentor. And so the partner that I picked also happens to be the partner that failed his CV twice. And, but he's 30 years old. He's partner, second year partner now. And he's got a growing client base. That's a uh, growing practice. And when we went for lunch, in December, just he just wanted to like let me know that it's all good. Like, how do you feel? Let me tell you about the emotions that I felt failing the first time and then failing the second time. And so we we talked about that. So it's now been a month later, and it's time for me to start looking. What do I need to start prepping? Or like, when did he start prepping to take it take a stab at it the second time? And well, for him, even his third time around. So. Um, I mean, I'm hoping not to get to that point and I pass it on the second try, but just to see what he did and if I can kind of emulate some sort of plan like that and kind of, and go from there. Life is, life is long, but life is short and it's, it's too short that we make the same mistakes as other people. So like, first of all, thank you. Uh, thank you to your partner for showing, um, tremendous leadership and, um, gosh and just like being a, a good human about it and a good leader um kudos to you for being a good human and a good leader uh as well uh, i know that there are students you know who uh, we we need to talk about this more and we don't um and it's in the middle of our journey right um i will say that i fail like i what did I fail? I think I got two papers rejected last month or this month, or I don't know. I like, I, I fail so much now that it's like, 
I, I kind of forget about it because it's like, no, I'm pushing, I'm growing, I'm learning. I'm going to set aside time. And like, was it that I pushed out something that wasn't ready? Sometimes. Yes. Um, did I know I wasn't ready at the time? No. Uh, you know, my friend talks about the, the value of despair. Like when you don't know what you don't know, there's this overconfidence bias. Like I definitely have had that. And now I'm in like the valley of despair in, in certain aspects of my, my research life. And like, it's okay. Because the only time we fail is when we stop. And like, it may be cliche, but, and like, honestly, even then, if we just like pivot and we're like, hey, cool, this isn't for me. But like, we just need to talk about it more because, you know, 70, I think there's like what, they haven't released it, but like typically 68% pass rate, which means that, you know, there's a 32% fail rate of people who are really smart and working and doing really good things, right? Like <laughs> that, you know, and in there, there's people that, you know, didn't, I don't even know if that has people that stopped halfway through, but like, regardless, it's, you know, Bob, one of my former bosses who retired at like 55, wrote and failed twice, um, you know, got it on his third. Um, one of my, my like dearest colleagues, um, I don't even want to say how many times uh, that she wasn't successful, but what the thing is, is like, she is like the best manager, the best now executive it doesn't hold people back in their career. And there's actually a hypothesis. And like, if there was an unlimited number of days, I would want to study it. But like that long-term career growth um, and and satisfaction is likely better off for the people who had some adversity like throughout because uh, it's not all sunshines and rainbows, right? And it's, it's about, hey, what do I do now? It's the kitchen attitude. It's the COVID attitude. It's the like Sifi attitude. Like it's, it's all of it. It's the attitude. So... Uh, yeah, Justin, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you for supporting me. Uh, thank you for being an awesome human and you, you have a fan for life here. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. All right. Um, if students want to get a hold of you and have any questions, am I okay to put your LinkedIn down below or email or something? Yeah, for sure. So that whatever, whatever is easiest for them. Um, they've got questions. That's not a problem. Okay. And in parting, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say uh, to students? Um, any advice for undergrads or, um, or anything before we uh, sign off? Uh, I mean, the only advice I would say for those who are in the undergrad program that are going to do accounting is it really is understanding like why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, to me, like I couldn't, I can't just regurgitate the information. Like I couldn't just, if you tell me that this is what it is, like I can't understand, like I can't do that. So for me, like I need to understand, okay, well, why, why is it that we're doing this? Like, what is the benefit to um, the shareholder, or, like to our owner, to why we're doing this? So to me, it's a, it really helped me understanding why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then that made the, the test, the exam, the case writing a lot easier for me um, in that aspect. Cause I could case write all day long, but if I don't understand why I'm doing it, I'm going to talk a lot of BS without actually coming up with something productive or something important to say. So that's kind of like the big thing for me is like just understanding what I'm doing without just like regurgitating the information. It doesn't help, it won't help you in your career, so. Oh, yeah, without the why, undergrad, yeah. CPA, life, <laughs> a lot harder. Perfect, uh, thank you so much, Justin. No problem.